The Origins of SpaceX Elon Musk is passionate about the ability to send people further than we've ever gone before, more particularly making humans an interplanetary species. Now it wasn't until 2001 when Elon actually had enough capital or money to make this happen. After he sold his previous company PayPal to eBay, he had a couple hundred million dollars to try and create something that would get us excited about Mars. The reason was NASA at the time the budget was actually decreasing or plateauing and there wasn't a lot of interest in the general public about what was going on in space. So he had an idea called Mars Oasis, which would pique the general public's interest similar to how the Apollo mission did so in the 60s and 70s. Now the idea of Mars Oasis is to send a small greenhouse to the surface of Mars, which would inevitably allow them to take a time lapse of plants growing surrounded by a Martian environment. Not necessarily in the atmosphere or the temperatures, but in a restricted field that could show us yes, it is capable for life to grow on Mars. Now, as they are going through some of the initial stages of developing the entire project, they were able to approach some of the challenges and overcome them, but one of the biggest ones that they ran into was actually getting it to Mars. Now, the cheapest option for a US-based rocket at the time was $65 million, which was way too expensive for Musk. Therefore, he explored the option of purchasing previously made ICBMs from the Russians. He actually made three journeys to Russia to try and negotiate a low enough price, but it never reached his threshold. Now on the way back from one of these meetings with the Russians, it turned out he did some basic calculations to see how much from just a material standpoint does it cost to make one of these rockets. And it ended up being only 3% of the values that he was getting from either the Russians or the US. Now this idea of creating cost efficient rockets mostly in house eventually led to the creation of SpaceX in the year 2002. So at the time SpaceX and Musk had the idea of what they wanted to achieve but they actually had to be able to accomplish it. They had to make their first rocket or minimum viable product or MVP. This being the smallest factor that they could be able to create to show that they're actually efficient in doing so, which would ultimately become something called the Falcon 1. Now the Falcon 1 would ideally be able to take 450 kilograms to low earth orbit and was named Falcon 1 after the Millennium Falcon in Star Wars. Now at the time when the company was formed, Elon Musk said that he would try and get the first Falcon 1 launch to occur in November of 2003, which was only 15 months after the formation of the company, which is pretty quick to develop your very first rocket. Now the headquarters for SpaceX was based in Los Angeles, however the entire team knew that if they were going to be developing rockets, they would also have to be developing the engines that power those rockets. But you can't do rocket testing in the middle of a highly populated area, therefore they had to look out into different locations to see where they could have a test facility. But they purchased some land in McGregor, Texas, which had been used all the way back to World War II for explosion testings, different companies in the aerospace industry actually tested their engines, and the most recent one being Beale Aerospace was failing at the time and they basically replaced what they had done there with their current methods of testing. Now this facility at its peak time had five to 6,000 employees at its location. However, when SpaceX first started what they were working on, it would only have three employees, three people trying to develop a new rocket engine. Now the focus at McGregor was to develop the Merlin and Kestrel engines. The Merlin engine would be used on the first stage or what would lift it off of the launch pad going up into space and the Kestrel engine would take it from its suborbital trajectory into its final orbit. But soon after SpaceX purchased the land at McGregor, they ended up getting their very first customer, being the Naval Research Lab. And they wanted to send up a small satellite called TACSET-1 now this satellite would conduct a few experiments on board to see whether or not military commanders could get daily updates of images from space to see how exactly the battlefield is changing over time. So the Naval Research Lab wanted to launch in January of 2004. So now that SpaceX had a main facility to build their rockets, a main facility to put everything together, now they needed a launch site. And originally they wanted to use Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is rather close to Los Angeles and they actually ended up constructing a launch pad 
on top of a previously made Atlas launch pad. However, due to some limitations with other rockets that were being used at the time and the flight path that the Falcon 1 would have to take, inevitably that was pushed back and never used. So again, SpaceX eventually had to move and ended up going to the Ronald Reagan Ballistic Test Site, which was on Malik Island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Now this island had been used in the past for testing different missiles and rocket ideas, however it wasn't last used since 1996. And the size of the island is only around 6 football fields, therefore it doesn't make up that much space. And in the middle Pacific, it's near the equator, which is great for launching. However, the climate is very hot and humid, which could be pretty harmful to the rockets you're trying to launch. But the timeline that Elon Musk had came up with was actually not realistic. He wanted it all to be done by the end of 2003. However, it wasn't able to get done by the launch time in 2004 or even throughout all of 2004. It actually ended up that the TACSAT-2 or the mission that was supposed to go after TACSAT-1 ended up being launched on a completely different rocket with a completely different company before the Falcon 1 even got its first test flight. Therefore, it ended up being somewhat of a failure for their first customer. But SpaceX did get another customer, being the United States Air Force Academy. They have a project called FalconSat, where they actually put students at the academy together to try and create a satellite that could test different aspects in space. In particular, SpaceX was going to be responsible for launching the FalconSat 2 project. Now it's thought that the Department of Defense spent around $7 million for this launch, but it's not for certain. Therefore, SpaceX was still rather in the hole, looking at almost $100 million in expenses, but no successful launches thus far. However, in November of 2005, the very first Falcon 1 was on Malik Island, getting ready to launch. Now it ended up being around 23.1 meters tall and around 1.7 meters in diameter making it a rather small rocket, but pretty impressive for something that they could put together in three years. Now to no surprise, being in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, there was a weather delay, and this ultimately ended up pushing the launch back an entire month, because when they tried to refuel the mission after the rain had gone away, they weren't able to top off the fuel. It ended up for some reason not working. So they had to take the Falcon 1 down and refix it off the stand. So then when they put it back up a month later, they ended up doing the exact same thing, experiencing a weather delay. And when they tried to take the liquid fuel out of the rocket during the weather delay, they forgot to open up a valve or a valve didn't open and therefore caused a vacuum to form in the actual chamber that the fuel was being held within. Therefore, it actually caused a lot of structural damage and they had to recreate the first stage of the Falcon 1, again pushing the first launch back. So now we're looking at March 24th of 2006. So let's watch the video and see what actually happens here. So the Falcon 1 took off from the island and had a notable rolling motion early within its flight. Soon after, a rocking motion was noticed until around 30 seconds into the flight when the craft pitched over. Now, something with rockets is pitching isn't that great of a thing, especially when you're close to the surface, because that means instead of going up, you're now going horizontal to the land, which could eventually be more like a missile. Now, the Falcon 1 ended up coming back down, crashing into the ocean only about 100 meters away from the launch pad that it had just left from. And the Falcon Sat 2 actually landed rather close to the cargo container that it was shipped there, which is kind of ironic. However, it was damaged beyond repair and was inevitably a failure of a mission. Now, one of the initial observations for why this happened was that a bolt had come loose in the engine and then fuel was released into the first stage. This would allow fire to expand throughout the stage and inevitably cause it to fail. However, further investigations showed that the bolt actually was completely tight. However, corrosion due to the humidity in the surrounding area and the weather caused the Falcon 1 to fail. So as we could see in March of 2006, just around four years after the formation of the company, we go from this great idea of trying to inspire people to go to Mars to a Falcon 1 and a rather small rocket falling and failing into the ocean. So how do they prove themselves in the aerospace industry? In the next episode, we're going to talk about how they get their first rockets to actually work and then start the Falcon 9 process. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.